Hello, welcome to Iceland and Sweden. We're here as part of a student-run field trip, as part of the Society of Economic Geologists student chapters, and it's a combination between two universities, mine in Tasmania and the one in Canada, Lakehead. We're joined by various industry professionals, world-leading experts in the fields of volcanology, um, economic geology, and igneous petrology, as well as various local experts and mine geologists. Our field trip consists of two parts. Sweden in order to study economic geology and visit various mineral deposits and mines, and Iceland in order to learn about volcanic terrains and geothermal activity. Hello, so we're here in Sweden. We start off in the south visiting the historic Uto quarries and the underground Sala silver mine. If you want to orient yourself, this shaft here. This is the main shaft, the Queen Christina shaft. We're inside the Salazar mine, and they've been mining this since the 1400s. Crowd in! Okay, guys. The Salazar mine is a large scarn deposit with ore composed of galena and sphalerite. The silver occurs as antimony and mercury-rich inclusions within the galena. I mean flowing out along the folded beds, but the, the ores themselves appear to be folded. Next up was the Belieden own Garpenberg mine, where we were guided by Ronnie Allen, an expert in ore deposit geology of the region. Different facies if you can match. Limestone rich facies and volcanic rich facies with less limestone blocks. So here in northern Sweden, this is the Sheffield district, and it's composed of a cluster of different volcanic hosted massive sulfide deposits, and some of them are Kristinberg, which is where we are currently. Yeah, and that we think is corresponding to this form. So we're here at the ITEC uh, open pit mine. The giant ITEC copper gold silver deposit is over 1.8 billion years old and has been highly deformed with the main ore consisting of mica rich schist and gneiss. It is thought to be a perfect copper deposit but its genesis is still debated. Lastly we visited the famous Karuna deposit, a type example of an iron oxide apatite deposit. Not only is Iceland one of the most breathtaking geographic places in the world, but it's one of the most interesting and unique geological places to study. We started near Reykjavik, the capital city of Iceland, with a guided excursion inside a lava tube where you can see great examples of how the lava flowed and moved from the inside. This is followed by a tour along the Golden Circle. One of Iceland's most popular tourist routes, we stopped along the imposing gold bus and the geothermal fields contained hot springs, geyser, and still. This is elongated gravid that represents the sub aerial expression of the Mid Atlantic Ridge. Next up was a geological tour of the Snifelsnest Peninsula, an off rift volcanic zone that is perpendicular to the main north striking rift of Iceland. We were joined by Icelandic volcanologist Haraldr. A little hydrothermal revolter, but you can see it's uh, uh, relatively massive. From the west, we progressed east towards Mivatin, traveling from some of the oldest rocks in Iceland to some of the youngest. The magma is, in fact, a surface lava flow rather than magma rising up through a conduit to the surface. So I'm here at Dimmerberg. So we had a lava lake that flew over wet unconsolidated sediment. Gas connects into cold groundwater. The gas carries the heat up from the geothermal system here and that heat gets transferred into the cold groundwater and makes it boil. So you're looking at boiling acid sulfate water. system contains fissure swarms, crater rows, and normal faults surrounding a central volcano. Next up was driving through the interior of Iceland to the young and violent Central Highlands region.
this is Mullerin. So all this is the new lava field that was created since August 2014. We're walking over some fresh lava and ice. The main layers produced during the 1875 explosive eruption. Remember, it was only 17 hours long. Continuing south, we pass by the large glaciers that partly cover Iceland towards the vibrant Land Manilager region. And geothermal activity continues to bleach and alter the mountains of Land Manilager. The Laki eruption was the second largest basaltic lava flow in historic times. The volcanic ash cloud and sulfur dioxide was dispersed into the atmosphere and covered Europe, causing acid rain and climate perturbations. Lastly, we ended on the southern tip of Iceland, 